let's talk more about that Tumo and, and what that looks like. And you, you use the Wim Hof there as a synonym for it. But what is this? I know a lot of people these days are familiar with Wim Hof and his work, but let's get into to what that practice looks like in a general sense and, and why somebody would want to incorporate that. So for most of the show, we've been talking about breathing very lightly, very slowly and, and deep in this subtle way. So why the hell would you ever want to purposely hyperventilate yourself, which is exactly what Wim Hof method does, what Tumo does, what Sudarshan Kriya does. It turns out that once you have that foundation of breathing, you can use breath to go up that, that next rung, right? You can use it to heat yourself, to heal yourself. So for people who want even more of a boost or who have autoimmune diseases, they've, they've found that Wim Hof and, and Sudarshan Kriya can definitely help abate some of the symptoms of these diseases. This focuses all of the stress in the day in a 15 or 20 minute section, right? The vast majority of chronic diseases today are directly linked to chronic inflammation. We are stressed, so we're chronically inflamed. We're eating the wrong foods, we're chronically inflamed. What these do is they work as like a pressure release valve. You focus your 15 minutes and you just... <sighs> You just go for it. You be a complete freak. You tense your body. You loosen it. You breathe a whole bunch so that the rest of the day, the other 23 and a half hours of the day, you're functioning, you're functioning normally. You're chill. You're breathing normally. And that's why I think they're so effective. It's like going to the gym, right? You wouldn't go to the gym all day long. You destroy your body. This is going to the gym for, for stress. Uh, for respiratory health. And that's why it's it's been so effective. And there's so many studies coming out right now looking into these different breathing modalities and, and how they can really help people with quote unquote incurable diseases. And it's interesting. I'm not sure if this exercise I'm doing periodically, I actually do it before I do recordings because it gets me really alert and feeling energized where I'm doing some quick breathing, breath holds, Basically, that's it. There, it's this guided app that I have on my phone, and again, I've just—it's something I've only been doing maybe for a year, but I just find like I think so much more clear once once I've done that. So I'm sure it sounds like a lot like what you're doing with the Wim Hof breathing. These are what you're doing is you're hacking into states of focus, right? So with that quick breathing, you're getting that little burst of norepinephrine. And then with that breath hold or exhales, you're getting the uh, acetylcholine. So, so in combination, those two neurotransmitters will allow you to really focus on a task, on the task at hand. They're stimulating your body and then they're calming your body down, which is why Dr. Andrew Huberman down at Stanford, he's been researching this breathing technique, super simple. He calls it a physiological sigh. And all it is, is it's two breaths, one on top of the other. So... You can open your mouth for this too. So um, occasional mouth breathing while talking, laughing, totally fine. So just doing that will stimulate you, but it will also focus you. And uh, it's an interesting one. It's so quick. And if you feel tension or anxiety or stress really booting up, this is a wonderful one to do. If you think about a lion, like before it goes to sleep or a cat or a dog, they often go, <sighs> and that's what you're doing by forcing yourself to do this. 